All right, what's up, guys? Um, I've done absolutely no preparation for this, so we're going to look at this together and see if we can figure out what's going on. So the big question that we have to um, answer here, of course, is uh, what in the world is going on with um, the uh, 1949 White Sox and with Comiskey Park? Um, if you've been watching along with me here as I've been playing through these games, we have seen a lot of triples at Comiskey, and I've got to wonder what in the world is going on. So let's go take a quick look over here. Um, unfortunately, it is going to be small for you. I apologize for that. I can read to you what this says. In the American League, the Indians, with their two wins um, against the uh, White Sox, have now won seven in a row. They're tied for first place with the Yankees. Remember, Remember, the Yankees have a doubleheader coming up against the Athletics. Um, that is going to happen uh, what we would call today, but that will not happen in the today that you see uh, because of the way that I'm spacing these videos out. And it's not going to be today for me either because I'm not going to play multiple games in a day. I've got too much going on in life. Um, but uh, the uh, Indians are playing quite well. And uh, they won against the White Sox largely on the back of a lot of triples. And that has me really, really interested. So we can, what we can do here is we go up to the organizer, and we'll go over here to Parks and check out what is going on in Comiskey Park. So when we go over to the Park Factors, we can see here you got a 120 factor for triples for lefties, 123 for righties. Now, um, we'll go ahead and take a quick look over here at the uh, help uh, page so that we can sort of understand what's going on. A lot of this stuff doesn't matter, by the way. General park information doesn't matter. The physical characteristics of the park don't matter. That's all eye candy. I mean, stuff like, you know, oh, it's so many feet back here, so many feet back there, it has nothing to do with how the game handles it. Weather does matter, but it's statistical park factors that really matter. And so uh, one of the things that we notice when we read about this here is that the numbers here will range from 20 to 500. The average ballpark has a rating of 100. So if a park only allows 58% as many home runs as the average ballpark does in the season you're playing in, the home run rating for that ballpark would be 58. So the lowest you can go to is 20% of all the home runs that were hit, 20% of the home runs an average ballpark would see. If a bar ballpark allows 40% more triples than average, this triples rating is 140. That can go up then to 400%, which is insane. Um, in this case, we're looking only at about 20% more triples for uh, left-handed batters and 23% for right-handed batters. Um, and uh, so it's uh, pretty interesting to read through this. I'm not sure if this math is actually correct, right? So here's an example. If a team's road game included 140 home runs and its home games included 100, you could conclude that the home park allows only 100 divided by 140 um, or 71% as many homers as the average of the other parks in the league. Um, I'm not so certain that we've thought through the way that this is uh, handled um, all that correctly. So a team's, any team's road game, when they're pitching on the road, they've given up 140 home runs in all ballparks. Um, and in their home games, they have given up 100 ball, uh, or 100, 440 home runs. They've given up 100 home runs in their own ballpark. We're concluding that the way for us to measure this is to take that 100 divided by 140 to equal 71%. Right, and so we assign a home run factor of 71. So it's uh, giving up 71% of the um, uh, average number of home runs for the league. But the way that we're calculating this strikes me as a little bit odd. I think it's a little bit more difficult to calculate probably than just looking at the number of home runs you've given up on the road and at home, I guess is what I'm, I'm trying to say. So I'm interested to know whether this is um, uh, in uh, keeping with real life or not as I sort of want, uh, ramble my way through this. I know we've talked about park factors before. As you'll recall, uh, Comiskey Park um, has a real interesting thing about it in 1949, which is the fact that this home run total is slightly um, exaggerated because of the first eight home games of the season in which the uh, fence um, was in a different spot than it was for the rest of the year. So it's another thing sort of to keep in mind. We'll just take a quick look here at uh, the uh, White Sox page and see what we can come up with. So I've got... Uh, Good old uh, uh, my uh, good old uh, Libre Wolf browser up here. This is the 1948 White Sox. This isn't going to tell us too much. Other than that, the team overall hit 66 triples, which is probably pretty good. In fact, we can take a quick look here at the um, league itself and sort of see how that compares. And then in a second, we'll go ahead and take a look at the splits. So uh, in, within the league, we're looking at uh, the White Sox had what 66 triples that led the league, which tells us that they probably did have a ballpark that was fairly good for triples considering how bad their offense was overall a lot of uh, what probably would have normally been home runs i think um, wound up becoming triples that's what my guess is just looking at the raw numbers so there you have it now let's uh, go ahead and see if we can figure out what the uh, league-wide batting splits are so uh, we'll go over here to uh, league splits 
And uh, this will uh, tell us, uh, this will just tell us the uh, batting splits for the entire league. We want to see this, if possible, by team. Let's see if we have anything, uh, anything that's uh, quite useful here. This is where I probably should have uh, looked at this um, on my own beforehand. What we can go to here, though, is batting splits for the team. Here we go. And uh, just see if we can spot, you know, if anything is happening in the home park or not. As you can see here, yes, yeah, so they hit 41 uh, triples in their uh, home park as opposed to 25 away. There is a little bit of a, a factor, I suppose, when it comes to that, right? Maybe there's something that's going on. I'm not saying too much that's important in, in terms of uh, the months of the season, the half of the season, or anything like that. Um, let's go take a look here really quickly at the uh, pitching splits. Let's see if we uh, see anything else there that might give us um, some insight into what's happening. Um, and uh, so when we take a quick look at this, we can see that, yeah, look at this. Their pitchers gave up 19 uh, triples at home as opposed to 24 away. And so you've got to ask yourself, you know, how significant is this? What kind of adjustment do we have to make in this situation, right? Is this an example of a team that has like a very major pro triple um, ballpark rating or is there potentially something else that's going on? I would argue that in this particular case, having this type of ballpark split is probably creating a uh, is probably creating a bigger problem than would exist if you didn't have it. And really, that's kind of what the point of this is and the reason why I want to talk about this, right? In general, when it comes to baseball simulations and to finicky stuff like this, like looking at uh, batting splits, looking to see how many home runs were hit in this park, how many triples, how many doubles and stuff like that, you got to be careful. My recommendation would be to be more conservative so that you can avoid situations where teams are hitting triples all over the park like we just saw with these last two games, right? I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. I like seeing triples. I like seeing guys run the bases. I think it's pretty cool, right? But the problem that we have is that just glancing at the statistics tells me that it's probably not really that simple, right? Yes, they hit a certain amount more triples at home than on the road, but their pitchers gave up fewer triples on home at home than they did on the road which tells me that eh, it's probably kind of murky and it's probably the sort of thing where you'd have to look at maybe changes that went on in the ballpark and maybe take a look at this over a, a longer period of time, right? Um, my personal preference, honestly, as much as I love games that have these really, you know, set in stone and very, very well-defined adjustments, my personal preference is for games that do not carry these adjustments because if you try to make a small adjustment for one thing in one place and you have a miscalculation or if you have thought about uh, the, uh, the logic behind what you're trying to do is not fully baked, it's not fully cooked, then you might run into a situation like this where we have way too many triples being hit in one ballpark or way too many home runs being hit in another ballpark, and then at the end of the season, maybe your stats are way off. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll take a look at this at the end of the season. We'll do all sorts of comparisons. We have a long way to go before then. But um, I do know that I've seen a number of players on the White Sox who have more triples already than they did in real life, um, and we're not even – we're just at the halfway point in May. So take that as you will. Love to know what your thoughts are on that. Talk to you later. Bye.